prochirality is the potential of a molecule to become chiral. Although many planar groups have a plane of symmetry and are therefore achiral, many planar molecules have the potential to become chiral through the addition of a reagent or the substitution of one group for another. One aspect of this idea that we haven't really explored yet is the notion that the different spaces above and below the plane of planar groups can possess different stereotopic relationships, just like two different groups in a molecule can possess different stereotopic relationships. This is significant because reagents can approach planar groups from one face or the other, and if these are different stereochemically, then we would expect different reactivity on the top and bottom faces of the molecule. In this first example here, the example of acid aldehyde, you can see that this is a planar molecule. However, the addition of a nucleophile to the top face, as represented by this blue arrow, or the bottom face, as represented by this red arrow, leads to two different products, which are enantiomeric. You can see in this one, we have one configuration at the stereocenter here, and in the lower molecule, we have the opposite configuration at the stereocenter. In a second possible situation, this molecule here, which already possesses a stereocenter, can be attacked by a nucleophile to generate diastereomers. Attack from the top face of the molecule, which in a sense is closer to this tert butyl group, leads to a diastereomeric product to the one that's generated from bottom face attack, which is represented by the red arrow here. Notice that the existing stereocenter remains the same in both molecules because it doesn't participate in the reaction. However, a new stereocenter is formed when the reaction takes place. As a result, the two resulting products are diastereomeric. And in a final example here, some planar molecules can be added to to give the same product regardless of whether addition takes place from the top face or the bottom face. That's the example here with acetone. Addition of the nucleophile to the top face generates this compound, to the bottom face, this one. But these two molecules are essentially identical. Rotating this one by 180 degrees will generate the top one, and vice versa. So here we've seen three examples of molecules with planar groups with different stereotopic relationships between the two faces of the planar group. To classify the stereotopic relationship between two faces of a planar group, we can use many of the same tests and terminology we thought about for the stereotopic relationships between groups themselves. So what we can do is a procedure very similar to the Q-test to distinguish groups. If we add an achiral test group Q to one face, and then add Q to the other face, then we generate two Q molecules and then when we compare the relationship of the Q molecules, the stereoisomeric relationship between the Q molecules, that will allow us to determine the topic relationship between the faces that were added to. So for instance, in considering acetone, and looking at the stereotopic relationship between the top face of acetone and the bottom face, what we would essentially do is add a test group Q to the top face that would generate a molecule that looks like this, and one to the bottom face, and that would generate a molecule that would look like this. And we compare the stereoisomeric relationship between those two. Noting that they're homomers, we would see that the two faces of acetone are homotopic. In the next webcast, we'll see why classifying faces in terms of their topic relationships is important in thinking about reactivity and in particular, the relationship of achiral and chiral probes with homotopic, enantiotopic, and diastereotopic faces.